there must be a balance in everything. Everything, including your thought process or your non-thought. Sometimes you have to silence the brain activity. Shut it down and learn to listen to your inner voice. Okay? But I'm afraid to use the term inner voice because people get confused. And they're waiting for an actual sound and a voice that, that says, turn left right here. But actually, that's not the way spirituality works. And even the word spirituality, <laughs> we get confused with that. With balance, you have an equal amount of logic and knowledge and intellect on one side of the scale and the equal amount of spirituality, intuition on the other side of the scale. There's balance. You're not leaning too much on the inner voice, but you're not leaning too much on intellect. But we become so intellectual, so logical, we've obtained so much knowledge and information that we think we have all we need. We don't need to tap into that spiritual force, that universal force and power. We don't have to tap into the spirit. They've taught us to shy away from our intuition. But we have that intuition. The intellects among us. Those that lean heavily or excessively on logic can't understand spirituality. But it's spirituality that'll tell you to do something that logic is telling you makes no sense. If we take going to a destination, let's say you're driving, and you know the area well, and it makes more sense to drive the way you're driving. It's the most direct way. It's the way that takes the least time under normal circumstances. But that's the logical side. That's the knowledge side. The knowledge that you have of the direction that you should go, that you should drive. But then you get that feeling. The inner voice says to you, you don't want to go that way today. You should go this way. So now, <laughs> you're in a situation here. Because someone has told you to ignore that inner voice. To ignore that intuition. So you proceed to go the way that logic tells you to go. And then you go that way and you get caught up in all kinds of traffic that wasn't reported on the news that you rely so heavily upon. And you say, man, I knew I should have turned left back there. Something told me to turn left back there. But our intellects tell you that that's ridiculous. That that's spookism somehow. There's no scientific evidence that that exists. Well, if you're only going to rely on scientific evidence, then your intellect, your knowledge, your logic is going to be limited to whatever science says is possible at the, at the moment. And then every time science proves something, then your knowledge is going to change. But science is limited. It's limited to the amount of information we have about a subject. Spirituality, the inner voice, the intuition, the feeling, is 
is not limited to our knowledge. It's not limited to our logic. It's not limited to our intellect. In fact, intellect can be a hindrance. Now, we know that spirituality can also be a hindrance when practiced um, ineffectively or inappropriately because we tend to lean too heavily on one side or the other, but we're talking about balance. So on a scale, you have an equal amount of spirituality and an equal amount of logic. If you look at the tsunami that took place in Asia some years ago, it was a couple of years ago, four or five years ago, I don't even remember, that killed all them people. They say that the animals <laughs> took off. The animals took off. And the casualties were mostly human. Now, some of the domesticated animals, because they were taught to depend, they were trained to depend on their intellectual masters, their logical masters, they had they got killed too. Okay? Those humans that got killed, they were relying on their intellect. They were relying on the alarm, the weather report, which many times is accurate and sometimes it's not so accurate. So when it's not accurate, what do you depend on? What do you rely on? Sometimes you have to rely on that inner voice and trust the inner voice. We have to learn to shut down the brain computer. Let it rest. All things in the universe rest. Learn to listen to the inner voice, which I'm afraid to even call the inner voice if I didn't say it already. Because then you'll be listening for a sound. You'll be listening for a language. The inner voice has no language. It doesn't matter how much knowledge of the language you have the inner voice is more of an instinct so quiet the brain computer and learn to listen to the inner voice and almost 300,000 human lives yet in all the parts of Thailand Sri Lanka and other areas destroyed by the tsunami not a single animal that was free to move lost its life Or did they feel the sea quake two hours before, with its epicenter hundreds of kilometers away in Indonesia? How did they do it? Is it simply instinct, or are there physical or even chemical stimuli they respond to? 